Good evening and welcome to another edition of the Magpie Circle. Lots to talk about with Mark Stallard and Chloe Page tonight. Uh, on the agenda, um, your thoughts and views, please, uh, on Mansfield. Um, never like losing, never like losing to Mansfield. Some of you were encouraged by the performance. Your thoughts and views, please. Um, playoff prospects. We are still <laughs> not quite sure how. We are still seventh. And that's clearly what's got to be the place, the lowest we finished this season. What do you think? Do you think we're going to make the cut or do you think we're going to drop out of the playoff places come the end of the season? Transfer window has now finally shut. Uh, incomings for us, Charlie Colcott from Crew, Alessania Jatta, uh, the Gambian, uh, Luca Ashby-Hammond in between the posts and Jaden Warder, who made his competitive debut for us at Mansfield on Saturday. Thoughts? Are you happy with the incomings? Cummings, a little bit underwhelmed, your thoughts. Uh, and Gillingham on Friday night, every game, the next game is always the most important, but does, in your view, mean a little bit more importance? Um, the manager's still looking for his first win, but let's put this into context. Four wins in the last 13 matches. That is not good. Not good. Um, hopefully we can dig ourselves out of it. Lots of thoughts and comments already coming in on the message boards. Um, but we'll start off with Mansfield and we'll start off with Stell. Um, yeah, one of your old clubs, of course, Stell. Um, I mean, look, I'll nail my colours to the mast. I take no positives whatsoever from Saturday because we lost the game. OK, zero points, nil point. I, you know, so on the way home, yeah, going back down the A60, I draw no positives whatsoever in the overall picture. Um, we got beat. Um, your thoughts, Del? Yeah, frustrating, obviously, to get beat, to lose another game. We, we've been losing too many games of, of recent times. And I'm going back, what, 13, 14, 15 games, you know, before Stuart Maynard came in, we're losing mm. too many games. Um, Saturday particularly, with, with an eye to Saturday, you're right. When you lose a game, you, you, it's very difficult to take many positives out of it. But I thought the performance was OK. You know, first half was was decent. Um, you know, and again, if buts and maybes don't don't count for anything. But on another day, you know, we, we at least go in level terms at half time, if not ahead. Um, but second half wasn't really good enough. Didn't really create a, enough problems. Didn't create enough chances. Um, you know, against a good Mansfield team, got to be got to be honest. Although they had players missing, it was a decent Mansfield team. Um, mm. and, and I said on the radio, I, th I think, look, it's frustrating, massively frustrating, and and we need to be getting something out of them sort of games. And it was tight, and you can say, well, it was you know, it, it was a decent enough performance. But I think the difference is. And I say I mentioned it on the radio is that if you look at Mansfield, they've had three, four, five years of John Radford putting his money in, yeah. backing managers, getting a decent squad, paying the wages for players, and being there or thereabouts, and then adding, you know, maybe changing the money, but adding players, having that rotation, and it's taken them a number of years. Now this year they look like they could possibly could possibly be the year that they actually get somewhere. But they've been knocking at this playoff door, knocking at this promotion door for a number of years and not quite got over the line. So it's not an easy thing to accomplish. And they've had a few years. I thought Saturday, the difference between the two teams really looked, they looked a little bit more battle hardened in mm. terms of scrapping and getting over the line when, when you're maybe not at your best, when you've got some players missing. It just looked a little bit to me like they were a bit more, I'm not going to say they've been course and distance because they haven't got over the line, but but they've been in and amongst a playoff battle and a, and, a, and a promotion battle at the top end of League Two for the last few years. And they've had a good budget whilst doing it and they've had a good turnover of players. They've had decent players doing it. I just thought Saturday, it's fairly imperceptible at times, but I thought that was a, a, telling, a telling difference between the two teams. In terms of performance levels, chances and things like that, we would have better first off, they would have better second off, but they took one chance and that was the difference between the two teams. But it just smacked to one of them games where I think they were, you know, battle hardened to it and maybe knew what to expect a little bit better than not. But, you know, it sort of 
pull it, pulling at straws a little bit, mentioning things like that. But that, that's the sort of thing that, that resounded with me after the game when you're thinking about it, going, they've been up the top end of this table for a good few years now, scrapping away at it. And the players there know what it, know what it's going to be like. Not seven. We've been in the National League, let's not forget. And last season was virtually all, all winning and teams rolling over half the time, you know, us being a class apart. You know, it's different this time in League Two and we're finding that out. We'll get the thoughts of Chloe in 30 seconds or so. Let me just read out. Uh, it's quite a cosmopolitan bunch of uh, <laughs> posters on the message board so far. Nick G says, thought our bench looked weak on Saturday. Uh, no other striker options available. Adam Kent says, Mansfield, another match we should have won. Not sure why Jody and Aaron were swapped around, both cutting inside. I understand this can be done to mix things up, but not for up to three quarters of the match. Sure, we'll be getting some professional professional critique on that one as well. Confused me a little bit. Hello from Karen Knight, Pythagoran. Uh, just feeling some refereeing decisions really going against us this season. Uh, John Parnham, good evening from Chile, Nuneaton. Uh, due for a snow bomb later this week. Don't have snowfall anywhere, have you noticed? We have snow bombs, thunder bombs, rain bombs, or I don't know, whatever it is. But anyway, it's supposed to be a snow bomb on Thursday and Friday. Um, James Moore, evening all. Uh, glad to catch you live. Live this week. I think he likes the yellow shirt. Uh, I think Stel ran rings around us in this when we were wearing these shirts for Bradford City at Wembley. I think. Um, evening from Kay and Kenneth Pointer and Dave Woolley, uh, James Moore. To say Warner has only been at the club a short time. I was impressed with him on Saturday. Uh, John Parnham, a good performance against Mansfield, and it was their strong defence that defeated us. I do think that there should have been some substitutions towards the end. One wasn't enough. Uh, Chris B, get through February still in and around the playoffs, and I'd be confident that we will finish in them. Hopefully build some momentum towards the back end of the season going into them. Evening from George Hilton. Uh, long distance spotters badge goes to Robert Minister, who is uh, watching us, listening to us from sunny Australia. There you go. Can't get much further away. Okay. Sam Draper, transfer window is decent, in my opinion. We've now got more bodies in key areas and we kept hold of Jody and Macca. Um, James Moore uh, adds the question I'd raise is to why Hammond isn't starting. Um, agreed that Stone has improved the last two games, but his distribution is still poor. How far is Sam off? Well, Sam Slocum was uh, in the warm up on Saturday, um, so you would like to think he probably isn't too far away. Um, will be interesting to uh, how you how you handle three goalkeepers, first choice goalkeepers, uh, when Sam's fit again. Uh, Ian G says, evening all. Friday's a must win for me to settle the ship and stem the criticism of the new boss. Evening guys from Derek Gill. Uh, Chris B, looking at the bench against Mansfield and Barrow, there were really few good options that you'd fancy to improve our chances of scoring. Uh, Samuel CJ, why is Makari not playing games? He's a very stable defender. Been injured, more or less back, I think, and available now. Uh, Sam, a uh, reasonable result against Mansfield, says George Hilton. I don't know if he's a Stags fan or not, but hello from Hornchurch, David Skinner, uh, Chris Gosling. Gillingham is massive. There is no easy run of fixtures in the remaining games, so need to show we can beat teams around us to stand a chance of keeping uh, in the top seven. PG says second game in charge for Maynard and he's not used subs. Does someone need to tell him the rules? Could have done with fresh legs in both matches. Um, hoping Jatter on the bench Friday, says Jürgen Halligan. Uh, no chance, Jürgen. We'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, evening from Hamburg, says Simon Blair. Uh, Friday is important. We need to get into winning ways again. Can't wait to travel over it for it. Well, well I hope it is worth travelling in from Hamburg, Simon. Plenty more. Uh, we're busy on the keyboards. Chloe, now then, you took you took a, after, a day off from your employer's Burnley, didn't you, to come down to see the boys in action. Um, was it worth it? Uh, not really, no. <laughs> so, yeah, I um, I missed, missed a match day, so I got a lot of uh, stick off um, people at work this morning. Yeah, um, just so people don't know, you work full-time at Burnley, yeah, and normally would be at a home game, but you kind of, like, took a bit of holiday to, to come to the Big Nuts derby, yeah? 
Yeah, it took a bit of persuading. Uh, we don't normally miss a match day. Um, <laughs> but I I just laid it out. So I was like, biggest game of the season. We haven't played them in four or five years. And they said, you know what, go on, have one off. So <laughs> it wasn't worth it. And maybe I should have saved it for a better one. I mean, the last game of Burnley's season is the same day as the playoff final. So I might what? need to do a little bit more persuading there <laughs> if I can. <laughs> Um, so it's not working out too great, but that one's a, a little bit too far in advance when we start talking about right. as, as a young fan. Now, clearly, you do not remember the days of Knotts being in the top flight and all the rest of it. I've said on many occasions, I struggle with Mansfield as Knotts' main derby. But for the younger generation of fans, it's a big, big game. So what were your thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean, it was a difficult watch, to be honest. Um, I think that like everybody said we were better off first half. We had a chance to go 1-0 up in the second minute. Um, and I think we had three chances. <laughs> then I think Jody hit one. And then I think um, Didzy then on the rebound. And I think somebody else had a go, but they were all cleared. Um, and after that, I thought, you know what? We're really up for it today. And if if we show up like we can do, this is a weakened Mansfield side. Don't get me wrong. They're still, like Style says, they've got a lot more depth now. But it's still a weakened side. If you ever want to play Mansfield, it was this weekend. Um, and I just don't think we really kicked on. I mean, we had a couple of half chances. Another day, the Maka had a goes in that came off the post. And another day, the one that um, came off Flint nearly for an own goal, that goes in. So I think we were unlucky. I think defensively we were much better. Um, I was quite impressed with the with the new defender. I think he was a little bit shaky to start with, but it's a big game. It's his first game. But overall impressed. I thought Stone had another really good game. I think, like somebody mentioned earlier, he is getting loads better. And I think we've also got Makari to come back into that. So I took that as a positive. I think their goal, as much as we gave them a lot of room on the edge of the box, it was a great finish. And they've been able to take their chance that we couldn't do. I think it was difficult to watch the inverted fullbacks. Um, initially, I mean, like I say, in that first two minutes, we created a great chance from it. But I think we were struggling after that, really, to create a lot more. And like I agree with what somebody else said, that it took too long for that to change back. But even when it did change back, we didn't do a lot else, really. I think Jody and Naman had a couple of chances to cross the ball into the box and they either went out for a goal kick or went back into midfield so it, it was a difficult watch especially second half and it's difficult as well like somebody said with our bench I think it is weak at the moment um, but personally I'd have put on Jim O'Brien I thought we were losing out in midfield you like uh, Jim O'Brien don't you Chloe there's always a place for Jim O'Brien in your team <laughs> absolutely love Jim O'Brien but I just it was screaming for don't get me wrong Robertson I thought had his best game for us yet I thought he played really well um, and was one of the only people to put a tackle in. And we just needed somebody else to get that ball out of midfield and drive it forward. So, And I know a lot of people moan about our defenders passing it sideways and backwards, but a lot of the time they don't have another option. So I thought just bringing somebody else on might help that. But overall, really disappointed. Obviously, it's a big game and there wasn't a lot that split the sides, just a, a very good finish. I don't think they were particularly good either, but... Again, they know how to win games and they know how to draw out these results. So we didn't really challenge them much second half. I don't think he really had a save to make. So overall, disappointing, but looking forward to see some of the uh, the new bodies in. Uh, a few more comments. Uh, David Skinner just about got over our defeat from my local non-league football club. Uh, at least the locals have stopped reminding me of it. Uh, Chris Gosling, um, you. Uh, th this is talk about Jatta coming in. We'll pick that up in a moment. Uh, positivity from George Hill. And I believe that we will turn the corner on Friday, then move forward from there. Um, let's have a look at what else. Uh, AD Clark, thought we were unlucky not to get a point. Um, what's the thoughts about Jones and the man switching wings? Uh, John Parr, evening all. Think we did not do enough on Saturday to take a point. Very concerning about squad depth, given there was uh, very few attacking options on the bench. But we'll squeeze into playoffs. Um, Chris Gosling flints header across the line, even according to some Stags fans. A point would have been a deserved result. Uh, Ian Cooks is seven wins in 19. Is that what it is? Uh, game shambolic. Incoming's very underwhelming. Uh, sign a striker, then have to wait for visa. The bench is not good enough. No strength. I don't think Ian's very happy with life at the minute. Um, uh, Ian G echoes the thoughts of Stalin. He's over 
wrote in comments, they were more savvy than us. Robert Minister, great summation, Stell, about our match against Mansfield. They scrapped better than we did. Our Dizzle 12, disappointed by the result. We didn't create great enough. Had chances early on that another day we may have got the rub, rub of the green, but still feel more could have been done. Um, I think we're expecting too much in our first season back, says Jurgen. Not ready for League One. Uh, AD Clark, only one sub, two games running, shows lack of strength, depth at the present. Uh, Derek Flowers, best thing about Saturday was my meal at Burger King. Um, Dale <laughs> Like it, the ref on Saturday was the one at Wimbledon, and he gave us nothing on Saturday as well as at Wimbledon. Duncan Comrie, Macca having to feed on scraps up front. Uh, let's take a break. There's a lot of them tonight. Still, <laughs> while, while we're getting things off our chest, right? I'll get you one thing off my chest, and I'll get you the professional's critique. <clears throat> People talk about what a wonderful goal, unstoppable finish from the Mansfield guy. When he's got, when he's finally got the ball. And when there's no one on him and when he can size it up and bend it in with his right foot from 20 yards, when he hits it, it's probably unstoppable. But I would respectfully draw people's attention to the passage of play leading up to that game where I counted not one, not two, three golden chances where three players could have cleared the ball. And for whatever reason, they get caught between... I won't play it long. I'll take a touch. I'll play it sideways. I'll do this. I'll do that. And as a result of those three decisions not to clear the ball, they end up with an unstoppable goal. So I, I don't see it like that. I mean, I don't know what your thoughts were, but little things like that kind of frustrate me immensely. And you often say, and you're the pro, I am, me and Chloe are, but the amateurs, as Derek Pavis would always say uh, in his meetings with Neil Warner. That frustrates me immensely because I guarantee you Mansfield would have cleared that identical situation and it wouldn't, we, and the chance would not have been created. Fair comment or not? Quite possibly, Paul. I must admit, I've not really watched it back. Um... <laughs> You tend not to want to watch a local rival winning goal back against you. But at the time, you know, Notts may well have had that. I don't recall the passage of play building up to it. What I do recall is Keeler Dunn being able to have the ball played into him with nobody tight to him, five yards or so outside our box, able to receive it sort of on the back to goal, sort of on the half turn, turn, then have another touch to set it out of his feet and then bend it in with not a Notts player within three or four yards of him, well, you know, on the edge of our box. Now, Mansfield, that, five it, it, all. <clears throat> the what, sorry? Mansfield. Remember the 5 or one where the blokes picked the spot with, the, with, with, with that yeah, goal? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, the Grimsby game. So, look, small margins, of course, they are. And again, you've got to remember these are League Two defenders, League Two players. There's going to be mistakes and there's going to be things. But when you get a player like that on the edge of your box, opposition's leading scorer, you just need, you need some. If nobody's going to go with him when he drops into that little position, that little pocket of space, then when he receives the ball and looks like he's going to turn, somebody's got to be there. You, you're two yards, three yards outside your own penalty area. You know you can't have you can't allow players that amount of time because even in League Two, the chances are that somebody with a bit of quality is going to produce a finish like that. You know, yeah. I, I get the bit the bit prior to it, Paul. I can't recall it, so I can't yeah. really comment on that. But, you know, it, even just that final bit was really sloppy. I know I know, we'll go, it's a great goal, it's a great finish, which it is for, from their point of view, but it's poor defensively because you shouldn't be allowed to get that shot away. There should be somebody too, somebody tight with him. You ask any of the sort of top defenders, not so bad, Dean Yates, Shorty, anybody mm -hmm. like that over the last few years, you have a look at that and see, see what do you think about the defenders. So the defenders too far off him. Um, but, you know. So my concern, Stan, is when people talk about the improvement, etc. And this is not, and, and, and I think as some people have mentioned, this is not about Stuart Maynard, because Stuart Maynard no, has no. only been here for three games, okay? And the reality is our form has been bottom half of the table for three months. You know, we our last win away from home was in October at Gillingham. Um, so this is not about Stuart Maynard, but, um, and we all know every single game, I guarantee you, at Newport next Tuesday, I'll guarantee even at Wrexham, we have more than 50% possession. 
guarantee it. But what you can't seem to guarantee at the minute, there does still appear to be quite a high repetition of errors defensively that ultimately undermine so much more of the good work that you do. And you, you can't keep doing that, can you? And not keep getting punished for it. No, you, you can't keep doing it. But, I mean, with Saturday particularly, I mean, OK, we, we can critique every goal. Every goal yeah, that happens, yeah. you can criticise and there's, there's mistakes along the way. Somebody's not picking somebody, you know, you could pick them apart. Saturday, take the game as a whole, I thought defensively we were, we were, you know, pretty sound, pretty solid. They had a couple of chances other than the goal, but I thought we, we were OK. I, it's, again, it's that balance now. And again, mm. this is no criticism of Stuart Maynard has been in no. the building to the 10 minutes. Um, he, he's, he does seem to be working towards making us more solid, you know, yeah. not giving up sort of chances and, and things like that. But then has that come at a bit of a price of, of, of losing a bit of attacking threat? That said, we could have been 1-0 up in two minutes, should have been 1-0 up in two minutes, really. Um, you know, and but for a couple of bits of bad luck, could have easily been ahead or, or back on level terms well within the first half. So, you know, games, small margins in games. Second half, we didn't create anywhere near enough, nothing like enough. Um, so, again, it's, it's trying to find this balance between stopping the opposition having chances and scoring where, you you know, you've got to get bodies back and defending and doing their jobs and switched on and organised and difficult to beat and break down. But then having that threat on the counter-attack or having that threat when you go forward and getting bodies into the opposition box. Now, that's that takes a lot of physicality and a lot of organisation. Mm. And finding that balance, finding that balance between defending in numbers, attacking in numbers is is tricky. It's not easy. Um, so, look, no, way too early to, to criticise mm. or anything of Stuart Maynard. Nothing whatsoever. Uh, you know, absolutely, he, he gets a sort of a, a bit of a free pass so far from what we've seen. Um, you know, it's nothing to do with that. So, look, it, it was a tight one Saturday. I think if, if, if the game had have finished 0-0, 1-1, I think both sets of fans would have come away and gone, yeah, probably about right. You know, probably about right based on the 90 minutes, but it didn't. And again, I go back to, for me, is that where Mansfield are just a little bit more savvy, as the, as the, the guy said with the comment, you know, a little bit more battle hardened at League Two level, at the top end of League Two. Um, who knows? But, you know, small margins in, in elite sport, in professional sport, you're always talking about small margins. Very rarely are there big, massive differences between one team and the other. And, and it was the small margins on Saturday that cost us. And you say it might well have been them mistakes leading up to the goal. But again, you can always analyse mistakes. Mm. You could critique the mistakes going forward. Why did we not create more chances? You know, the, the Aidan Flint with back header hit the, hit the crossbar. That it, I think I've seen a picture as well. I think Stephen Carter from the, from the ground had a picture of it. And I don't think it is over the line. If truth be told, it wasn't a great angle from the camera that was used on Saturday, but he had one set up behind the goal showed me after the game and, and yeah, it wasn't, it, it certainly didn't look in, but you know, it, it wasn't a great angle, but, but yeah, we didn't create many clear cut chances ourselves in the 90 minutes. And that's something, you know, we, we have to look at again, you're playing against a top defense, a decent defense, a team with one of the best or the best defensive record, certainly at home in the division. They've not conceded double figures in goals at home all season. So it's going to be difficult. You have to be at your best and, Unfortunately, we weren't quite. But in that first half, we could have we could have had a couple of goals quite easily. And you know, you, you, then we're talking about a different sort of game. But look, ifs, buts, and maybes. The game was on. We got beat. You know, Friday is massive now. I think I think Friday is very important. We get a win, and and I expect us to as well at home. But um, yeah, disappointing. We were in disappointing run of results in terms of you know last fifteen games maybe. But I think particularly it's that it's that away form. It's the, the away results. We're just not picking up enough points away from home. Um, and we've <coughs> got to try and rectify that between now and the end of the season. Chloe, thank you for waiting patiently. Um, transfer window. Um, Colcott, Jatta, Ashby Hammond, Warner in. Um, no one left the building. Uh, and, I, and I've got to be honest, it does amuse me. And, and, and Stella's always telling me to calm down with the Twitterati numpties. But I, 
there was no chance ever that Macaulay Langstaff was going, no matter what HC101 or retweeted by somebody else that so-and-so's got a bid. There was no yeah. chance ever that Jody Jones was going to Wrexham for 250. It's just all complete Twitter numpties. <laughs> so they were never going, right? Okay. But four in, are you happy with that? Um, it's a difficult one because we haven't seen them. Um, in terms of position wise, yeah, I, I think four good additions. The goalkeeper one I'll never understand because we've clearly bought somebody in in stone, clearly to be our number one goalkeeper. Kind of didn't really play him, then we played him, then we dropped him, and then so we had Slocum again, and then we dropped Slocum, and then we bought Stone back in. And we've also got Brooks in all of this, who we just keep standing out on loan. So I'm I'm a little bit confused as to why we're bringing in another young goalkeeper. But look, we might never see him or someone might have a master plan and he's now going to be our number one goalkeeper. I'm not really sure about that one. Um, really liked Warner, um, like I said before. I think he's with a little bit more confidence. He's kind of what we need. He is more of a ball playing centre half and he he's clearly had some um some experience. <laughs> It's the game quite well. I think it was just a few nerves on Saturday, but I can't turn around and pick him out as being the worst player on the pitch. Um, so I'm glad we've got somebody else in. Again, we've got Makari to come back into this, who I think is a very good centre-half, and I can imagine he's going to be back in the team soon. Um, in terms of midfield, I think we're really missing Matty Palmer. And the, the stats and the points that we've dropped since he's been out show you everything. And I think... It defensively and attacking, we miss him. Um, a lot of the times where on Saturday or even the Barrow game that we're, we're losing the ball, it's in midfield. So then the defenders are already playing high up the pitch and then they're getting the blame a lot of the time. And I think they are scapegoated sometimes um, in terms of defensive errors because I think we lose it in midfield too often. And I think Matty Palmer was one to never really do that. He's, he's such a safety net for us. And I think he breaks up the defence and in, in the attack brilliantly going both offensively and attacking um, and defensively. So he's a big miss. So it's nice to see us get another midfielder in. And again, it's this, we need this depth and whether we're ever going to see them or whether they are looking at pushing into the first team is going to be interesting to see. Um, and then in terms of Jatta, whether we actually ever get to see him, even lamed as on the bench, I don't know, with his, uh, with all of his visas and things like that. I thought a little bit random um, in terms of, apparently it's quite a, quite a bit of money in terms of what we, we usually spend. So the owners must see something in him. Of course, I trust the owners implicitly. They've got nearly everything perfectly right. And I trust them with with the signings that they've made, I trust them with the manager and they, they can't put a foot wrong in my opinion. And of course you're not going to get a, a gem out of every single player that you bring in, but whether it's somebody different, something different to come off the bench in Jatta, or I have heard a lot of people that have locked up a lot of clips and says that he's actually, his work rate is very much like Macca's. He's very much a, a worker and a runner and he's not just a target man. So It'll be interesting to see him actually come in because, like a lot of people say, we do look a bit predictable sometimes. When we're not in our complete flow in the game, we do kind of pass it out to the wings and they they can try and take somebody on, but you can't do it every single time. And once we get it out to the wings and we maybe can't get across in, we just go back and hope to get it back out to the wing again. There's nobody kind of breaking it up and giving us something different. And I think it's also difficult for Stone. We say that his distribution isn't very good. He's not got a lot to hit at, to be honest. I mean, you've got McGoldrick, who is a little bit taller and a little bit muscular and can hold the ball up better than others. But sometimes he's right out on the touchline on the wing. So if you try and hit him six or seven times out of 10, that's going to go out for a throw in anyway. And I think there was there was a chance that he actually created on Saturday by playing a ball direct through the middle to Macaulay Langstaff, who was able to turn and run. And that gave us a different option. So as much as his distribution isn't like somebody like Edison in the Premier League, that we can't turn around and say he's, he, it's awful because... I think he, he's massively improved on that. And don't get me wrong, his first few games, they were all going out for throw-ins and then you've got a problem. But we've also got no one for him to aim at. So he is just lumping it long and hoping somebody can get on the end of it sometimes, which I don't I don't think you can, you can turn around and blame him. So I'm pleased in terms of the positions of people that we've brought in. Looking forward to see whether they make the cut. Obviously, Warner already has. And 
this midfielder from Crow, it'll be nice to see if he can get a game. And there's a few people, I'm just reading the comments quickly as they come through, talking about uh, John Bostock. And yeah, his form has dipped a little bit, um, I think, in the last few games. But he's, he's somebody that, that has been so good for us since he came in. Um, so maybe it's tiredness, I don't know. Um, but maybe it is time for somebody else to come in for a game and see if they can change it up a little bit. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing them all and seeing what this Jatter is all about because everybody's very excited about him. So I hope we do get him over the line and bring something different off the bench. And we're always saying with injuries and suspensions and things like that, it's always nice to have every position covered, um, which I, I do think we have now. It's just whether we're going to see the, especially the lone players come through. So I'm looking forward to it. OK, um, right. I'll, I'll give you even an update on Jatta as best I've been able to dig some information out. Uh, and, and, and I think this is a case, and we'll get Stelzio on this, it's a case of putting some context, I think, into the situation with the, uh, with, with the young man. Um, I mean, such has been the hyperbola on, on Twitter, you know, and, and rehashing his agent's um, video goal reel. Um, look, the situation uh, with him is that... He didn't start a single game in the Danish Super League last year uh, or this season so far for Viborg. He's been on the bench every game. Uh, and in those 14 games, he has made a total number of 105 minutes playing time. So quite a few games he's been brought on with five minutes to go. And he's got the one goal that I think every Notts County fan has seen 146 times against Copenhagen. Um, the previous season, he started three league games and was substitute for about another 17 games. Um, the, 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 the goal scoring record of 20 odd goals in 100 games, um, uh, let, let's just say it may have been manipulated a bit. From what I can see, he scored one goal in 40 league games in the last two seasons. Now, look, that is not a criticism. I'm trying to put some context in. But when the poor lad finally arrives, there's going to be huge pressure on him. Um, but the reality is at the moment, what's facing him is that he last played a game in the first week of December. He can't train with Knotts or come over to England until he gets the visa. And given post-Brexit, you know, it's, it's still being blamed for everything. I can't see him play, being, being in the country until March, I would have said at the earliest. So I just want to kind of temper people's uh, expectations and aspirations for the lad. And don't put too much on him too soon, because clearly he's not going to be fully game ready. You know, he's played very few senior games in the last two years. Um, so cue all the numpties on Twitter will be battering me now. But that, that's as best I can see it. Um Stell, um, two things. Um, have we brought in enough for you? We spoke about impact, didn't we? And giving it the best possible chance. Um, have we given ourselves the best possible chance to make the playoffs? Well, look, time will tell, won't it? Because mm. let's be honest, we, we don't know about these players. We've seen Jaden yes. Warner once on Saturday, promising. But, but you know, you don't judge anybody on one game. Charlie Colkett, we haven't seen. We'll wait and see. Scott Robertson's played, what, three, four games now. Um, who else we've got? Jatta, as you say, is not going to be maybe in the country till next month. So, again, he, the end of the season will tell. The end of the season will tell. And you don't want to prejudge these lads. And you don't want to write them off before they start. And you also don't want to... Hype them up before you start. I've just got to let the dog out. He's going to cock his leg in the corner. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Who lets the dog out? Wasn't that a famous old? Uh, exactly. Oh, that yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would have been an interesting interlude. Um, where was it? No. Yeah, you don't want to prejudge any of these players before they've really had a chance to even settle in. You're right. You want impact. When you bring players in in January, you want impact because they're not coming in to make numbers up. You know, we're not at a point in the season where... We need the squad just to be bigger because, you know, we may get injuries. Of course, you want the squad big enough in case you get injuries. But there are players coming back who, you know, the likes of a Will Randall who's back on the bench. James Sanderson can't get on the bench at the minute. And that's, a, a you know, a different conversation when people say about no attacking options on the bench on Saturday. That's an interesting one. Um, 
So, you know, Lewis McCory has come back. We've got Kedwin Scott maybe to be back before the end of the season, hopefully. Um, so you do want impact. And look, only time will tell. It's easy for us to sit here. We're all negative because we got beat by Mansfield. We're all negative because we're on a bit of a poor run and we're clinging on to that seventh place at the minute that things aren't going swimmingly. It's easy to go, yeah, we've not done enough in the transfer. We should have gone and got, you know, X, Y and Z players who'd have definitely got us into the playoffs and they would have definitely scored all these goals and they'd have definitely done this. We don't know, is the honest answer. We don't know and only time will tell. Um, so, look, when Alessandro Yatta come, Jatta comes into the building, we hope he, he is a worldie. You know, we hope Charlie Colquette can come in and, and have an impact. You know, same with anybody that comes into, into the squad. But ultimately, we don't actually know because, you know, I have I've not seen anything of, of, of any of them players. That I, I know nothing about them. Charlie Colker, I don't know anything about. Jatta, I definitely know nothing about. I say I've I've seen the package of goals, uh, like I think a few people have. And you know, you know, I, I could put a package of goals together if you include me Sunday league games when I was about twelve, but um but no, like but that's not to tar him with any brush. You know, he's coming in from a foreign country, he might take time to settle. Again, you don't mm. want to put undue pressure on anybody coming in. And signing anybody is always a risk. A week ago, we were talking about possibly Troy Deeney, weren't we? Now, I'm sure that would have divided people, you know, 50-50, maybe even more than that. But um, it's just not an exact science. And have we brought in enough? Time will tell. I don't know. I would have liked to seen a striker come in that could play from Saturday. You know, could have been on the yeah. bench, could have been available. A little bit like Tom Nichols, who Mansfield signed. I thought that's and that's another shrewd bit of business that they've done. But look, again, I don't operate the purse strings. I don't have the contacts within the game that, that the owners do and Richard Montague do. And I hope they pulled off a masterstroke. Here, here. Um, all that in mind, I, I, I've upset a few now, not to worry. Um, Gillingham, Chloe. Um, the, 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 I think we can all detect, and Stell's alluded to it there, frustration. And I don't really think it's frustration with um, that's directed towards the new head coach. It's kind of frustration over a long period of time because we haven't been playing well, particularly those fans that travel away. You know, it was Gillingham away, Makari scoring that worldie uh, when we last actually won away um, in in the league. Um, for me, Stell's mentioned it, and I welcome your thoughts. Gillingham adopts importance because we can settle things down a bit. Yeah? Absolutely. I think... My frustration comes from that I don't think it's a particularly good league this year in terms of I don't think there's many, if any, standout teams that I genuinely think I've watched this season and gone, fair play, you are better than what we are. I think Mansfield in the home game, definitely. And I think that's the one that stands out to me. And Less so in the, the away game. However, you've got to take into consideration their injuries, their suspensions, and they they still got the job done. I think the frustration for me is <coughs> we can't play well every week. And I know we can't have our best games every week. And But what I know Knotts can do is so much better than what I've seen other teams be able to do. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say I've watched every single team all season. I've seen their best games. I've seen their worst games. All I can go on is what I've seen them play against Knotts. And obviously that's credit to ourselves that we're not allowing them to play their best style of football. But I think overall, I think the form table shows this, that it's not a particularly... And when I say not a good league, everybody's beating everybody. And nobody can predict who's going to beat who. I mean, Salford had a great result against Wrexham the other day. Stockport had a flyer in the middle of the season. I think they won more than 10 on the bounce and then they've had a sticky patch, but nobody's been able to take overtake them. I think Mansfield have had a, a few sticky results against teams that you'd expect them to be. So I don't think in terms of teams and how everybody's playing that there's many standout people that you can go, right, that's the top three sorted and you can kind of guess who's going to be the next seven to ten places and looking to get a playoff. I think it's really difficult and the, the form table shows that. So 
Gillingham is again going to be a difficult game. Um, they're mid table. They've they've dropped slightly, but yeah, so so have we. So it's difficult. But I think personally, that's where my frustration comes from because I know this set of players can play better than what they have been doing. And I'm not expecting them to play phenomenally every week. But I've seen us kind of grind a result out against Grimsby. Yes, we actually went behind and we, we were winning that game in the last few minutes. But the resilience that I saw in that game, I've, I've not seen too many times. And it's either if we're playing really well, then we're, we're getting the wins. But if, if we're not quite at it, we are losing games and especially away from home. And I think we do need a bit more of resilience. But like I said before, I think a lot of my frustration is I don't think there are many amazing teams that we can't on our day go and beat, which is the most annoying thing for me. And yeah, do I fancy our chances over anybody in the playoffs? Well, yeah, but also have we got the resilience to do that? Can we turn it on because in the big games that I've personally seen against Wrexham, against Stockport, against Mansfield, we haven't been at it. I think the, the one that stands out for me again is the Stockport game. I thought we were brilliant that game and it was a real, what I thought would be a turning point. We, we've had a, a lot of away losses on the back of that and I don't think the home games were particularly good either, but it felt like a turning point, even though again, we lost the game, but it, it, it is difficult because Again, we say we've got a really tough run of fixtures, which we're proving to have, and we are losing games. But again, these sides also aren't in form, a lot of them. So why can't we go and beat Gillingham at home? It's like you say, it will settle us down. I think it will settle the manager down. It's his first win. Get it under your belt. It's done. Done with. Move on. And I think for the fans, it's right. We've got that first win let's move on and let's build on it. And the same for the players. It it comes with confidence. So we just need to build from it. And we can get that form, like, form back again, especially at home. And I can't see why we can't get a playoff place. But if we keep going into games when we're not at our best and then therefore losing, you, you are going to keep slipping. We've got to be one of them teams that, that we might not be at our best that day, but we can grind a result out, which... Is, is frustrating when I do think that we, we are losing points that way. But we'll see what happens for the rest of the season. Uh, Aidy Clark says, I feel Jatta has been brought in as it's inevitable that Macca will leave in the summer. Darren Haynes says, interesting that Jotter's management team posted last night that he has joined. Yeah, I mean, look, I think to, 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 to tidy this up, Darren and others, yes, Knots have signed him, as they pointed out in their own announcement uh, subject to work permit and visa and I think uh, one or two people quoting Chris Gosling uh, among them about how each club in the Football League is allowed two overseas players that don't necessarily fulfil European criteria. That's absolutely correct but he's but he's but the club will still have to go through a process of getting a work permit and a visa physically approved and stamped sent back to the club before the player would then be allowed into the country. And yes, I, I would see no reason normally why it doesn't, why it doesn't take two or three days. These things n never seem to happen at the speed you would think they could. And I think, I think Radio Nottingham have been reporting that their estimate is two to three weeks, which takes us through certainly into the latter half of Feb. Look, we all hope he's here Friday night. Um, I think it's a big ask. I think it's a big ask. Um, do, 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 do. What else have we got? Uh, Jatta is always going to be on the bench as an impact player, says Jurgen Halligan. Uh, Lee Atkins, how far is Kedwin away from making an appearance? I think when the club did an injury update um, from their head physio, I think that's March. Um do, 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 do. What else have we got that's printable or repeatable? Um, yeah, Chris Cousins saying clubs in League One and League Two will be able to sign up to two overseas players uh, per season who do not meet the regular governing body endorsement criteria, which have been approved by the Home Office. There you go. You still got to get it stamped. Good luck with the emails. Um, Lippy Jane, I think it's been a turbulent time. Uh, the lads need to enjoy the game and you can see stressed players. Uh, I'm looking forward to Friday. Ian Cooksey, Jimmy Cyril used to buy loan players on a Thursday and they would make their debuts on a Saturday. Uh, same with Neil Warnock. Um, John Parnham says, I think that Stell is talking sense. There's a 
tendency to prejudge and it's not healthy. Um, Gary Phillips, we have signed a lot of unfit injured players, even lone players. Um, James Spring says, think Stockport, Wrexham and Stags will be the top three. If we can nick a playoff spot, I wouldn't fear any of the other sides, unlike the National League, where you can finish where, within the playoffs uh, and it doesn't really matter. Um, A.D. Clark says, the biggest frustration is the team cannot keep a clean sheet. I would echo that, A.D., uh, and rely on outscoring the opposition. NCFC 1862, brilliant against Stockport, but still lost. We have no backbone. Jürgen Halligan, have to win Friday with Newport and Wrexham away to follow um john palmer doing <laughs> the comments from chloe early we're definitely missing matty palmer but the reality is we've known for two or three months we're going to be missing matty palmer till august right that that ship has sailed unfortunately you know um to, 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 to. Right, uh, I'll give some of them a miss. Um, Stell, I mean, you can detect. I know you don't. I know you still haven't quite worked out how to access the message boards. Um, nope. But people, people are a bit stressed. You know, uh, people have their, you know, opinions probably on two wildly different camps. But I guess this is what this is, you know, football, whatever people tell you, is not a performance business. It's a results business, isn't it? And at the minute, we're not getting results that the vast majority of Knots fans will be expecting us to get. And I think in some respects, Stewart's been unfortunate to come in, yes, to a team that has been in the playoffs for three months, but kind of is has been for a month or so on the cusp of dropping out of the playoffs. And our current form for two or three months has been at best, at best, mid-table. And our last 12 games will probably put us in the bottom six of the current form table. So it, it, it's kind of difficult for him, isn't it? On the one hand, people look at a playoff, stay in the playoffs. But there's been an underlying issue for us for a while now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'd agree with a lot of what's, what's sort of just been said. I think Chloe hit the nail on the head when she said about this division. But, uh, you know, it's about frustration of people in, and, and you fully get it because it happens with football, doesn't it? There's ups, downs, and everything going on. I think not supporters, not fans, anybody of us, we've got you. We've had four years in the National League. Now, I think now we're more than halfway through League Two. I think everybody will have noticed the difference in standard in yeah. competitive edge week in week out in league two from the national league now i i would i, I actually agree with chloe when i said i don't think there's any outstanding team in mm. league two this season but what there is from top to bottom almost is a very tough competitive edge and that's shown up and again chloe's right in the, the form tables i think there's only two teams in the division at the minute that won more than half of the last six games and that's newport and crew They've won four out of the last six. Teams in the top seven, apart from Crew, have only won one more game than Knots have out of the last six. So form is up and down. It's not the top teams are winning every week and the bottom or the mid-table teams are losing and drawing and the bottom teams are losing every week. This division is a whole heap tougher than that. You don't get such a mismatch as we got for the four years we had in the National League. And maybe we've just... This is our first reality. Last couple of months, three months maybe, has been our first reality check of, oh yeah, this is what league football is actually like. Mm -hmm. We don't just yep. walk it. We don't just turn up, play well, win the game, go home. You know, there are other teams that are almost as good, as good, on the day, better than us. Um, and you're given a proper game, a proper game. Like we saw, like we saw Saturday, we didn't play to our best. Mansfield didn't play to their best. But it's a proper game where you have to find a way of winning and getting that result. Because you're right, it is all about results. You want performance and you need performance to entertain and to bring the fans in. And that's why we've got the fantastic attendance numbers that we've got, because the performance levels over certainly the last 18 months or so allied to the success that it brought. But now you step up a level and every level you step up, you have to step up your performance level a bit whilst also still finding a way to get results. You watch games in the championship on telly or anywhere, you know, way higher than, than League Two. 
you don't very often see perfect football passing games that go one team have it, pass, 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 until the other team get it back. A lot of it is is still, you know, you go direct, you do the basics, you defend your goal. You know, it's still you still have to scrap and battle as well as play the nice football when you get chance to do it. And I think that's something that maybe Knots have just got to learn a little bit. Well, it's, I would say it's caught up with us over the last couple of months. But I think there is that element of when you're not playing at your best, we're not so much better than other teams in this division mm-hmm. that we're going to steamroll them if we're not at our absolute best. I agree with Chloe. If we are at our best, there's no team in this division that I fear that I don't think we can beat. Um, but... Does that mean to say we will beat them? No, because you don't play your best every week. And that's where you have to come down to, can we scrap it out? Can we grind it out? Can we, you know, can we win playing at 70%, 80% of the sort of football we want to play? And that's where it becomes difficult. And again, I go back to Mansfield and teams at this level have, have had experience of that. We haven't. And we're, you know, the frustration comes from us maybe getting a reminder of reality, of football league football as opposed to playing against some part-time teams every other week and some teams that haven't got the the, the finances we've got and, and haven't got the history that we've got and the support and can't attract the players that we can. You know, we were a big fish, a massive fish in, in National League football. You know, in in League Two, there's others that think they can match Notts County and at the minute in time that they're showing that they are. Sam Draper says, totally right, Stout. League 2 is a completely different animal. A lot more teams can grind results out without playing pretty football. Like Chloe said, we have to be more resilient now. Uh, John Parr, got to earn the right to play our game. Um, well said, Stell. Shane Walker, top 10 will be a good season for me. We touched on this a little bit last week, uh, Chloe. I think you joined us closing stages of the programme. And and I was not surprised, but I was interested that for you, it wouldn't be the end of the world if we miss out on the playoffs this season. You still subscribing to that? 100%. And I think, like Stel says, we ter- in terms of uh, the opposition, although there aren't teams that are standing out, we, we've got to realise that we've been the team that's come up and the, a lot of these teams have been fighting to get out of this league for a very long time. <coughs> or three automatics and then another four playoff places. We can't expect to just get in there. And we've seen that, that there's been a lot of times where we aren't resilient enough and we haven't been able to grind out a result. We've had to play at our best or better than the opposition to win games. And I think that's that's the big difference. And don't get me wrong, I, I still think we can make the playoffs. I'm not saying now, oh, let, let's just take 10th and sit out the rest of the season and I'm not really bothered. Of course, I want us to go for it as much as we possibly can. But if I, if I see at the end of the season that from what we've got in terms of players, we haven't introduced that many, realistically, especially first team players from last season. And a lot of them aren't still National League players to go up and then try and do the same thing again. If we get playoffs, fantastic. Whether we win them, whether we lose them, just to get in that spot and give it a good go. But at the end of the season, if I can turn around and say, look, I'm impressed with what we've tried to do this season. Um, I think we've done well with what we've got. New manager mid-season. And I think we gave it everything and we did miss out. I can't turn around and say I'm disappointed. But, of course, I, I do want us to go and fight and get that playoff position. Of course, I do. And anyone would be stupid to not think that. But it's not the worst-case scenario for us to miss out. And I think it's another big step up going up to League One. And I've had this chat with some friends and family. And I'm not saying that we can't step up in League One. and But I do think there's a lot of players that we then need to bring in. And I don't necessarily say that it's a good thing if we don't go up. Of course, everyone wants to go up at every given opportunity that you've got. And if we do have that opportunity, we need to grasp it with both hands and and see where next season comes. But it's not the worst season in the worst season in the world if we don't get playoffs and we can then bring in some more players for next season. Some may go, but we can then consolidate again and build. And a lot of the teams have had to do that. I know Wrexham's a little bit different. Um with how they went up last season and they've clearly got a little bit more money. And I'm not saying that that'll then win them 
well get them automatics because if if it did, then they'd be top of the league and they would have been from the start of the season, which again that they're not. Um, but it, it really depends. But I don't think it's it's horrendous for us to stay in this this league for another year or two. Um, it's it's not an easy thing to get out of, and it's a big jump again up to League One. So, but saying that, I think the Shrewsbury game. I um I had family that went down. I couldn't go myself, but as much as we had three calamity mistakes don't get me wrong I think a lot of the game that we showed that we could match them and we showed that we can create chances and it maybe isn't as big a step up as some people think but I don't, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world if we don't get them playoffs but of course that's what I'd love to I'd love to happen and see see what can go from there maybe another day at Wembley and maybe I need to get that um Forest game that Burnley have got at home last game booked off quick um it, it sparked quite an interesting uh, and thoughtful um, debate on the message boards here as well. Uh, Duncan Conry says, we came up on the crest of a very exciting wave. And maybe as supporters, we need to take a massive reality check. Top 10 is not failure. Uh, Gary Phillips says, Knots are still physically weak, but technically brilliant. It does seem a little unbalanced. Chris Gosling says, wherever we finish this season, we have to improve on it the following season. I can live with that. Gradual progress. Uh, Ian G, the price for no promotion will be Macca and Jody gone but hopefully a decent wedge in the coffers to bring in new talent. Gary Phillips says, last season's players deserved a chance this season. I think some have struggled. Uh, Chris Gosling, uh, Macca is 27 years old on Saturday. If we don't go up, we need to let him have a shot at the championship if any offers came in from that level. Uh, Jürgen Halligan agrees with everything that Chloe said. Um, uh, James Moore, imagine where we'd be with Scott and Palmer fit. I still say the ambition should be top three, playoffs minimum. Um, yeah, it's some interesting thoughts, Stel. Um, I mean, my two penalties, maybe it's having, you know, a few, few years with Martin O'Neill, who was just kind of the most uber competitive person you could <laughs> ever imagine. And it wouldn't matter who Leicester were playing. If they'd lost 10 on the trot and they were playing Man United, having won nine on the trot, he would set out to convince the players to win that game and put up a powerful case. And he would often, you know, I've used the phrase before, you know, didn't matter how you played, you know, um, get a win from somewhere, you know. And if you lost a game from being in a certain position, his favourite phrase, he would tell the players after a game, I don't know how we've lost that. You found a way to lose the game. So but I, I, you and I both said at the start of the season, if we make the playoffs, that is a right result. That is a right result because a lot of the fan base, it's very interesting, some of the points that have been raised there. A lot of the fan, oh, we're a League One team in waiting. Not League Two. We're a League One team in waiting the way we played in the National League. And I was never of that view. But kind of having been in the playoffs for such a long period of time, my kind of like competitive juices are such, you can't let it go. You know, you finished eighth, ninth or tenth now. That's, that's disappointing because we've been in these playoffs for so long. Yet the reality is we are going through a lot of growing pains in League Two. And I think momentum's a very important thing in football. And as some people have mentioned there, were we not to make the playoffs, does that affect the psyche and mentality of some of the players who've come up a division each year and Macaulay Langstaff would be one and think I did well then I did well then I did well then actually I want to try something higher and do you run a risk of losing players where, where are you with that needle still right now with us finishing in the playoffs and actually if we don't make the playoffs it's not the end of the world well, well I concur with everything that's pretty much been said in terms of I said at the start of the season if we the aim should be playoffs you know that would that would be successful if we get in and around the playoffs or get in the playoffs or even automatic that's not me ruling out like close said mm -hmm. if you if you mention playoffs that's not saying i accept the playoffs as the best we can do that's not me writing off automatic that's saying but i would take that i would say that's got that's the aim you know aim as high as you can and believe you're going to get there because i think we're good enough to nothing that i've seen has, has proven any different again reality is hitters in terms of the football league 
What's changed at the minute, and certainly over the last few games and weeks, is we haven't got that confidence or momentum that we had all the way through the National League, where you're winning, you know, six games out of seven. You, mm. you know, you're not being beat for twenty games. You know, you feel absolutely immortal. You, you know, nobody can beat you. You're going to just go into games, and you, it sort of not that it just happens, but you believe you're going to win a game. And you end up generally do it, winning a game or at worst drawing it. Now we've had a few defeats, and you know wins haven't been ten a penny. All of a sudden, we've not with with the players have not got that confidence. It's now they're having to fall on their reserves of inner self belief and inner confidence, inner belief that all professionals need. Um, when people on the outside, like us and the fans, were just questioning things. Oh, we're going to finish mm. mid-table. Oh, we're going to finish, you know, whatever. And I would say, ultimately, that's maybe the difference. You talk about Martin O'Neill. You, within the professional side of the game, the professional mentality of 99%, probably more, is is always looking up, always looking at the positive. Like, say, if you lose 10, you can win that 11. There's no re- You don't go into the 11th game and think, well, we're beat here. You go into the next game and think, we can win this game. We need to win this game. We've got to win this game. You know, fans tend to be, it's a little bit more like gallows humour, isn't it? It's always yeah. looking on the worst side of things. Oh, if we lose another game, we, we're not going to win again. We're going to be mid-table. We're going to be this. We're going to be that. I, I'm going to conflict brief. We win another game, we'll be safe in this division. <laughs> yes. Um, good. Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, that's the first That's the first stepping stone done. Yes, um, agree. But, but realistically, win the next game. And as we've spoken about, most teams in this division at the current time the form table shows that nobody really is absolutely on a on a blistering run. There are obviously some that are better than others, but there's nobody absolutely won five out of five, six out of six. I think there's one club won three out the last all three of the last three games. And again, I might that might be Newport. I, I might be wrong on that. I don't know. But there's only one team won three out of three. Knots have won as many games in the last six as the top three in the division have won in the last six. Mm-hmm. So, again, as we're thinking it's doom and gloom, maybe their fans are thinking it's doom and gloom. Maybe their fans are thinking the wheels have come off. Wrexham have lost the last two. You know, maybe mm-hmm. their fans are, are doom and gloom at the minute. You, you know, it's the nature. It's the nature of professional sport that it, it gets the emotions going, but it also gets, on the outside particularly, I would say, overreactions. Because, like anything, when you, I overreact now, more than I ever did as a player, because <laughs> I can't control anything now fans can't control anything we have we go we turn up we want them desperately to win the game to play brilliantly to score loads of goals keep clean sheet we can't do anything hardly to affect it fans okay can sing and chant and make all the noise and turn up in massive numbers as they have done but you, you it's out of your control the players when you're a player you can control it and whether that internally gives you more belief or whether you've got to have that belief and that mentality to become a professional I don't know chicken and egg what comes first or whether it's sort of bred along the way that that sort of winning and belief mentality but there's an, always a different mentality within the dressing room I think I would like to think they still believe they can get top three and that's not that's not me saying that it obviously is me saying it but it, but I'm saying that's what it might that's what it should be like in that dressing room forget what's gone we we've been up there. We know what it takes. We can beat. We can win the next game. We can beat Gillingham at home, and then after that, we can beat Newport down at Newport, and then after that, we can beat Wrexham at Wrexham. We owe them one at their place, you know. And and that's the timeline, if you like, of thinking you want within that dressing room. And I'm sure it will be like that. They won't be thinking, "Oh, crap, we've only won four out of the last fourteen, haven't we, lads? Oh, we better hope we get a draw on." You know, they won't think like that at all. But you can bet your bottom dollar fans will because they live it, breathe it and worry about it. Players have to go out there and perform. So it's a slightly different mindset. So, again, and it can only take one win to turn things around and get back that momentum, get back to the real confidence of playing that we know not so capable of. There we go. Positive note to end on. Get yourselves down. It's Friday night, not Saturday afternoon. 
Friday night, Gillingham. Um, let's hope we can get those three points. Complete a league double over them. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for all their thoughts, views and comments tonight. Been a good show. Um, we're hoping to have Kieran Maguire next Monday. We'll be taking a look uh, at football finances, uh, shining a bit of a light and a torch on Knott's League Two uh, and everything else financially related. Um, Chloe, Stell, thank you as always for your time tonight. Very thought-provoking uh, and, as always, uh, a very wide cross-section of you. Thank you, Chloe. Thanks again, Paul. Yeah, and thank you, Stell, as always, for your pearls of wisdom. <laughs> Cheers, Paul. Cheers, everyone. And thank you, everyone. We'll be back next week. Take care for now. Bye-bye.